When you think about the Bill Belichick tree, typically we think about it and we talk about it from a coaching standpoint and guys that came from that tree, the Nick Sabins of the world, the Eric Manginis of the world, the Jim Schwartzes of the world, so on and so forth. But you could make the argument that his greater impact has been in terms of scouting and front offices in terms of the people that have made a name for themselves in the league, such as Scott Pioli and Thomas Dimitrov. And of course, by far the most notable one of all of those, Ozzie Newsom. And it's weird to think about him as a disciple of the Bill Belichick player personnel scouting tree, but he absolutely was going back to the days in Cleveland when Belichick was the head coach there. And it's amazing all of these years later, these decades later, Ozzie Newsom has still been in charge of the Baltimore Ravens. Over two decades, he's been the guy calling the shots. And there is no doubt that strictly from a front office standpoint, taking away the Hall of Fame career as a player, that if you were evaluating Ozzie Newsom simply as a front office person, as a general manager, he would be a Hall of Famer someday, just on that work alone. One of the truly great careers in NFL history in terms of the number of years at the top, uh, the different ways that he helped dominate and impact and shape the game at first as a tight end for the Browns, and then as a front office man, the general manager for the Baltimore Ravens. There's no question, he's had a tremendous football life. Now, in recent years, I've been a little hard at times on Ozzie Newsom because I felt like, in part, people were allowing him to coast based off of past reputation. And to be fair, he'd done so much for the Ravens and they've enjoyed so much success under him, he kind of deserved some of that benefit of the doubt. But the recent results, or the lack of results in some cases, for that organization can be attributed to Ozzie Newsom and certain failures in certain places, specifically getting young edge rushers, specifically the wide receiver position, uh, specifically I also feel like the running back position. I mean, you could point at different things here. So, you know, you get to that point where you wonder, maybe it is time for a change and all the great things that have been done, maybe that's the past and the past is the past and that's not going to be the future going forward. So we found out that this was indeed going to be Ozzie Newsom's last draft as the general manager of the Baltimore Ravens. And how was he going to go out? Like a lion or with a whimper? Well, if you're a Ravens fan, you're probably flapping your wings and talking about the flock because this felt like, to me, an absolutely vintage Ozzie Newsom performance in the draft. When you look at the entirety of the body of work, all three days, the different things he was able to accomplish, the players that he got, the areas that were addressed, the value that he got in some places, to me, this was a great draft, and the Ravens were one of the clear-cut winners this year. I absolutely feel that way, almost to the point where if you're a Ravens fan, maybe you're not ready for Ozzie Newsom to leave and the next guy to take over, because if this is the type of draft you were going to get this year, could you get a couple more out of him and potentially build that next championship team? You know, maybe that's putting big expectations out there, but it feels like this is the type of draft that can help build that next generation of the Ravens and potentially be the foundation for a future championship team. I really mean that. Now, I know there's been quite a bit of consternation about them taking Hayden Hurst, the 25-year-old tight end from South Carolina at pick 25, but I look at it this way. To me, Hurst was the number one tight end in this draft. He absolutely was to me. Most balanced, most complete tight end in this class. And the Ravens traded down from 16, then to 22, and then to 25 in order to get him. So they pick up multiple picks around the way, drop their draft slot by nine spots. I don't have as much of an issue with them taking him at 25. I know you might still have the concern about should they have taken Calvin Ridley or not. Well, hell, Calvin Ridley is kind of a smallish wide receiver, and he's freaking 24 years of age. So how much of a difference is there really? They needed somebody at the tight end position that could be their Todd Heat type of guy. And that's exactly what I feel like that organization, Ozzy, envisions Hayden Hurst as. He envisions him to being that Todd Heat type of guy that Max Williams, Crockett Gilmore just couldn't be. And then to come back at 32, the last pick in the first round, and be able to get Lamar Jackson there to get ready to set up that next 
iteration of the Ravens to prepare for life post Joe Flacco and get a guy with the athletic talent and upside and underrated passing ability of Lamar Jackson and put him in this good situation, in this quality organization, and be able to do that and not have to give up a first-round pick next year. You give up a second-round pick in 2019. Shit, if Lamar Jackson proves to be that dude, then who gives a crap? You would have given up a second-round pick in the next three drafts to get him. I mean, it's just insane. He got Hayden Hurst. Then at 32, he gets who, for me, was a top-10 player in this draft and the number two quarterback, period, in Lamar Jackson. So I really like when you looked at it that way that that's what they came out of this draft with. Then you look at round three, Orlando Brown, this whole full circle thing. Zeus Jr. comes to play for his dad's old team and probably will end up manning his dad's old position. I look at Orlando Brown and in all seriousness, all the talk about the historically bad combine and everything else, he's a guy that's so big and so massive. He plays better than he tests. He's one of those guys that you feel like you put out there. In worst case scenario, you've got Ronnie Stanley at left tackle, Orlando Brown's your right tackle and probably could be for eight years to ten years. You get that guy in the third round, that's pretty good value. Mark Andrews maybe ends up being your Dennis Pitta type of tight end, your number two, your complement to the Todd Heat type and Hayden Hurst. But for a team that needed to get better in terms of its pass catching options, yes, you can invest a lot in the wide receiver position, with the, which the Ravens had between draft picks and specifically uh, with free agency, bringing in a guy like Michael Crabtree and now Willie Sneed. You needed to find other ways to help the passing game. The tight end position is a pretty good way to go, and there's nothing illegal about having two tight ends that can catch the ball. Well, they have two tight ends that can catch the ball now in Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews. I love the pick of Mark Andrews late in round three. I thought it was an absolute steal. And even when you go to day three, Anthony Averett, the corner from Alabama. Now, of course, Ozzie was going to work on an Alabama player at some point, but hey, it was day three. And it's a corner who's solid. He's not spectacular, but he feels like a guy that's your nickel-dime corner relatively early in his career. Good value in round four. Makes some impact as a special teams guy. He addressed wide receiver twice in the fourth and fifth round with Jaleel Scott, the big dude from New Mexico State. Jordan Lastly, the athletic kid from UCLA. If just one of those guys pans out, then this class just got a whole lot better. And then in the sixth round, to be able to turn around and get a guy like Deshaun Elliott from Texas, I'm sorry. There were vastly inferior defensive backs, corners or safety, doesn't matter, that were taking higher than Deshaun Elliott. And to me, in the grand scheme of things, the Pittsburgh Steelers massively reached for Terrell Edmonds at the end of round one. The Baltimore Ravens took a guy in Deshaun Elliott, who's probably an actually better football player, just an inferior athlete, in the damn sixth round. Some teams reach and don't know what they're doing and other teams don't reach and know what they're doing. And this felt like to me a vintage Ozzie Newsom performance in the draft. Like I look at this and I feel like he had a good, good sense of what he was doing. He had a plan. He stuck to it and really went out with a bang. Like this was, I thought, a phenomenal job by... Ozzie Newsome and the entire Baltimore Ravens scouting department and front office and feel like, based off of this, that they were one of the clear winners in the 2018 draft.